everybody out there in YouTube land. This is the Dragon Whisperer. This is my buddy Cheech. And this is another video for the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick, concise Savannah Monitor Care Guide. And we're going to be covering everything from enclosure size, feeding, temperatures, humidity, handling, all that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get straight into the video. We're going to try to give you guys a lot of information in as quick a time as possible and make this the best Savannah Monitor Care Guide on YouTube. So here we go, you guys. Let's hit the road. Roads. We know and we don't need roads. Now, Savannah monitors, they are the Varanus exanthematicus, and uh, they hail from south of the Sahara Desert down to the Congo River in Africa. Um, pretty broad range. Um, once they get down into the uh, Congo River Basin, they kind of cross into the Rock Monitor Territory, so that's kind of where they stop. Um, they are actually living in a tropical savanna area most of the time, and uh, they experience seasonal monsoons as well as periods of drought. Uh, they're typically ground-dwelling. Uh, they typically burrow or they live in bushes and low trees. Trees. And in Ghana, they've actually been found, the hatchlings and young ones, to be living inside the cricket burrows uh, to get cool and also feeding off of the crickets. Uh, their life expectancy for a savannah monitor right now is 10 to 15 years in captivity, and we'll go over that a little later in the food section of the video, why a lot of people think that is, because uh, we do believe they live a lot longer in the wild. And um, three to six feet uh, size-wise for adults, females can get... Um, not quite as big. They usually top out about three to four, and then the males from four to five, but they can get up to six feet. Typical weight for a male is, uh, adult is 10 to 13 pounds, and females, like I said, a little bit smaller. Now, these guys have been really difficult to breed in captivity. Many breeders have struggled breeders breeders have struggled uh, breeding these guys in captivity and a lot of the belief behind that is that because we don't have their husbandry exactly right and i'll go over some of that later in the video as well when we talk about temperatures and humidity for these guys but uh most of the breeders that have had a successful breeding with these guys they only get one off clutches the female has one clutch and then she either passes or she doesn't produce again so uh no breeders really have had luck with her peak clutches from any thriving females in captivity so that's why almost all of these guys are cheap wild caught on morph market i was super super lucky to get this captive bred guy so um that is basically in a nutshell the origin uh the size and the lifespan of these guys as far as what we know right now um, enclosure size uh for a baby or a hatchling you can go with a 40 gallon i mean i actually had rex in a 20 gallon for the first two weeks but he was fresh out of the egg when i was getting his enclosure ready and um you definitely want 40 gallon at least for a hatchling and then once these guys get to the sub adult stage you definitely want to be moving them up to something like a four by two by two um at, at the very minimum now, once they become an adult, they are going to need an 8 foot by 4 foot by 4 foot uh, at least. Like, they're going to need a big enclosure, and they're going to need 8 to 12 inches of substrate in that enclosure. And you're going to need multiple uh, UVB lights so that they get enough. And you're going to need multiple basking lights because a, a savannah monitor that size to get their whole belly and their whole midsection heated up, which is what they need for digestion. One light is not going to do it. If you have a, a light that's that intense, it's going to burn them. Um, but people that try to use one super intense light once they get older, it just causes heat burns on the back of their monitors. So you're going to want multiple bulbs too once they get bigger. So that enclosure is going to be a lot. The lighting is going to be a lot. It's going to be like piles and piles of substrate so that's all things you need to take into account if you're thinking about getting a savannah monitor um, now you want a cool hide definitely on the cool side uh, Rex has his log there and on the warm side, uh, you can give them a hide, but I found the best thing to do is just give them a nice piece of rock. And as you can see right there, Rex has made his own cave, and Rex sleeps in there at night, and he burrows in there in the day when he wants to get cool, but not necessarily go over to his cool side. And one little side note that I've noticed, um, much like leopard geckos, anybody else who has a savannah monitor, please comment in the section below. But my guy Rex 
always poops, and I definitely need to clean it up, but Rex always poops in the same corner all the time. He never goes to the bathroom anywhere else in his enclosure. Just like my leopard gecko, once they find a bathroom spot, they're kind of like a cat, and they will always go to that spot. So I've been lucky so far. Rex always goes to the bathroom in the same spot over there in the corner. But you definitely want to have a cool hide. A warm hide, lots of substrates so they can burrow. Um, I'll go over substrate in another part of the video, and um, definitely just you know lots of different interaction and enrichment items for them to dig around and burrow in places for bugs to hide for them to hunt, uh, and definitely always the water bowl. For substrate, you want to go with something loose like Eco Earth mixed with play sand, or organic soil, or reptile soil. You want to steer away from bark or mulch because those don't give the savanna monitors a chance to burrow and get down into a moist area if they need to. Okay, when it comes to lighting and temperatures for these guys, UVB lighting is definitely required with these guys. Basking bulb as well. Temperatures 120 to 130 degrees surface temp for the basking spot. Ambient temperature 90 to 100 on the hot side and 70 to 80 on the cool side. Relative humidity, all my research says 40 to 50 percent. However, you can see from this graph on the screen, the relative humidity in Nigeria, one of their home countries, is usually in the 80 percentile range. I recommend misting every day and make sure the substrate stays moist under the surface. When it comes to diet, these guys are strictly carnivores. Make sure you dust your feeders with something like Rapashi's calcium and multivitamin and definitely gut load. But they eat crickets, dubias, grasshoppers, superworms, hornworms, silkworms, snails, occasional mice or chicks, chicken hearts and livers, Rapashi's grub pie or Rapashi's meat pie, and high-end canned dog food. When it comes to feeding your savanna monitor, babies and hatchlings should be fed every day, sub-adults four or five times a week, and adults every other day. However, if you notice your monitor is getting chubby, then you are overfeeding it. Now, this is <clears throat> my little boy Rex. He uh, always comes out of his cave to uh, see what I'm doing when I come over to his tank. And uh, I have his tank in a spot in the room where me and him can interact on a regular I can see him really good from my couch, and he can see me most of the time, uh, no matter where I'm at in the room. He definitely knows his name. What's up, Rex? Hey, buddy. And um, so this is where I want to talk a little bit about the handling. Um, Rex, you know, he's not super, super big. You can see compared to my hand. Um, Rex, he's uh, he's not small, but... Uh, you see he's tongue flicking me there, making sure I'm not food. And once he realizes I'm not food, um, Rex is still very skittish. Um, you know, he's not much older than a hatchling. Uh, and these guys are notorious for not really wanting to be handled. Um, so it takes a lot of work and uh, effort to tame them down. They definitely have quite the bite uh, and bite force. I mean, that head is pretty much all made for crushing. They can eat snails. Uh, so... You want to spend a lot of time working with this guy. Uh, and typically, some of my techniques, uh, I'm just going to go over a few that I work with because it's not really a handling video. But just briefly, uh, for people, if you, if you are thinking about getting a Savannah monitor, some things that may help you out. Um, the first thing I've noticed, like obviously I wish I had a double door uh, or a front open enclosure because as like most reptiles, they don't as like... Um, can't get my words straight here but like most reptiles they don't really like the whole come from above see his eyes and the way he's posturing see the tail just curled up they do not like when the hand comes from above that that's the way a predator is going to approach them so that typically elicits a defense response and you already saw that the tail curled up the tongue flicks and the posturing he's ready uh to defend himself uh you know so he kind of blew himself up a little bit that tail he's getting really ready to defend himself so one of the techniques that i use um is i will do other things inside Rex's tank. Um, I always make sure he hears my voice. And as soon as he sees my hand, he started to approach it. He got out of his defensive posture because I've already been working with this guy. This isn't our first uh, handling or what I call building threads of trust. Uh, I'm a big Kevin McCurley fan, and that's what he talks about. So what I typically do when it comes to handling is I'll reach inside um, his enclosure, and um, and I like like I'm messing stuff. Let me check out your your log here, Mr. Rex, or let me check out your, your leafs over here, Mr. Rex. And a lot of times he'll come over to see what I'm doing because he, he keys on that movement. He's very food motivated. So then I'm just like, hey, let me check these leaves out. Hey, let me see if you got some bugs under here, Rex, and your little cool high 
hide. And, uh, and so then Rex, he sees me inside of his enclosure. He sees my hand interacting with things inside of his enclosure. Like I, like I'm messing with his plant. Let me check out your plant. Is there some leaves under there? And then once, once he's kind of established that I'm not here to mess with him, then he'll let me give him some pets and, uh, and he, he won't get defensive. Good boy, Rex. Good boy. And at that point, I can even pick Rex up if I need to um, and and manipulate him if I need to do some work inside of his tank. Uh, I don't hold him for any period of time. He definitely doesn't like that right now. Um, but once I let Rex know and once he's kind of figured out that I'm just here to check things out and I'm not here to hurt him and I'm not here to do any damage, then... Uh, then usually me and Rex can have at least somewhat of a, de de a decent interaction. And now, you see, he's got the tail whipping right there. And I don't want him to bite me, but I kind of want him to get defensive a little bit because I want you guys to see what happens. He'll tail whip me, but then he's never tried to bite at me. But if he tail whips me, I don't back down. I'll, I'll go back to rubbing him again, and I'll just try to talk to him gently. Uh, and we're still working on that. But, um... You know, I don't want to take a bite on video here, but if, if I, if I, oh, <laughs> he almost got me right there. You guys almost got to see a bite. Don't you bite me, Rex. Yeah, see, I got a little bit of tail whip right there. He's already starting to get aggravated, so we have to work on those bonds. Uh, he definitely took a little nip at me right there. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion it's uh, definitely a process that you have to continue to work on and taming down your savannah monitor is not going to be easy and it's going to take a lot of your time and uh, a lot of people use gloves because they're afraid of that bite but I don't want to use gloves I want him to smell me I want him to touch me and feel me and see even though he just bit at me I'm going to offer him my fist just to make sure he knows that I'm not afraid of him and I'm not really backing down from him um, so but he's not trying to bite me um, he's just, he's just defensive and you've got to just teach him that you're his friend and he doesn't have anything to fear from you. And now I'm going to show you another technique here in just a second that I've been working with him. And you can already see that he's worked up and you'll see how effective this next technique is. Okay. One of the biggest motivators for these guys obviously is food. So anytime Rex knows that, uh, I have food, he's definitely going to come out, uh, and want to interact obviously because he wants to be fed so one of the things that i've been working on with rex is if i put my hand inside rex's enclosure and offer him food then you'll see right there rex doesn't care at all about who i am if it gets him the food like i definitely don't want that food response on me for sure but uh, it's a great way for me and Rex to interact. And now target training is a big thing with monitors and big lizards, getting them used to knowing or going after a target for food. And one of the things that I've realized, especially with my dragons, and I learned it when I had a broken finger and I had one of those metallic splints on it and a dragon that had never bit me tried to take a chunk out of my broken finger because it was wrapped in one of those metallic splints and he recognized it as the same shine and color as the feeding tongs. So in my opinion and in my experience, the feeding tongs, if you use metallic or colored feeding tongs, they create a great uh, target in and of it, in and of themselves. So... But if I really want to pick Groot up, that's the way I'll pick um, uh, Rex up is by, uh, see right there, letting him, uh, while I'm feeding him, he doesn't care. He is so, so caught up in the food that he doesn't care that I'm in there interacting with him at the same time. So... Uh, you'll see, see, sometimes he'll bite at the tongs a lot of times when there's nothing on there. But uh, that's another great way to hand tame and interact if you've got a monitor lizard that has a heightened uh, intense feeding response. Then that's a good way for you and him to bond and him to see you as a source of good things and joy and nothing bad. And that will help uh, your further interactions.
Okay, you guys, once again, this is Wheel of Dragon Whisper. I'm going to get out of here. Me and Cheech are going to sign off. I hope you've learned everything you need to know to take care of your Savannah Minder. Me and Rex wish you the best of luck. Big shout-outs to BPL, Host Ways Exotics, Venom Wonderful. Thank you so much for the recent stickers. Uh, Kurtwood75, Reptile Feedings, Not Lose Exotics, My Animal House, Iron Dog Reptiles, Todd Autry, um, Proper Royals. You guys, go check these guys' channels out. They're awesome guys I've met in the reptile community. I'm going to get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm out.